thank you for the invitation and uh, uh, I am Italo Porto from uh, University of Genoa uh, in Italy. So I'm going to talk about the uh, intracoronary imaging in coronary interventions. Why do we have to use intracoronary intervention at all? Well, because there is a geometrical limitation with angiography, uh, because we project a 3D structure over a 2D screen. So we, although we use different angulations, we do not have a proper uh, assessment of the residual lumen. And by the way, we also have no information at all on plaque composition and characteristics. We only have indirect, in, indirect inference. So we have to use, we must use techniques which increase our resolution to see uh, objects and uh, to, to properly uh, evaluate uh, disease which is uh, micrometrical. So we use mainly two techniques, techniques based on ultrasound, which have a trade-off between resolution and penetration, and we use techniques based on light, which do not have this trade-off but are in general limited in terms of penetration. Uh, more recently, high frequency ultrasound, so high frequency I was bringing ultrasound based techniques close to uh, light based techniques in terms of resolution. What's resolution? We're talking about tomographic image, so slices. So we have three axes and we have uh, longitudinal resolution, meaning uh, how many slices we have per millimeter. We have actual resolution along the A line, so along the scan line, and we have lateral resolution, which is between each scan line. So three axis, three resolution. What we're talking about when we talk about IVUS and OCT resolution, for IVUS, we're talking about hundreds of microns. For OCT, we're talking about tens of microns. However, tissue penetration is definitely better for adults. Uh, more recently, as I said, high resolution techniques have brought IVUS close to OCT in terms of resolution and so definition to see smaller structures. Newest uh, machines, IVUS machines, have brought lateral resolution close to IVUS or actual resolution quite close to uh, OCT. So level resolution close to OCT or actual resolution close to OCT. So we now have HDI, which is an interesting technique. So what are the main features in, that we have to look for in IVUS pictures? First of all, we need to identify the lumen and the trace polygon, which is the lumen border. But the second, uh, structure that we have to identify on IOS image is the external elastic membrane or external elastic lamina. So let's look at histology. So we need to mainly identify the lumen border. We cannot see the intima properly, not even with OCT. We do not have this kind of resolution yet. The, but we can see the lumen generally. What we have to identify is the border between adventitia and media, meaning the external elastic lamina. If we are able to identify the structure, we are uh, making progress, progresses in our IVOS and OCT identification. So let's look at an, an, an IVOS picture. In this case, we can see that the IVOS probe and the wire, which, which on which the iris probe is mounted is in a lumen which is not a true lumen. You can clearly see that the external elastic lamina, this black uh, membrane which uh, differentiates the media from the intima is continuous in this lumen. It is not in, the, in this other lumen. So the probe is in the false lumen. Manipulating the probe and the wire, we can gain the true lumen. This is a very important use of IVUS uh, 
in order to differentiate true lumen from false lumen. This is, for example, extremely useful in, OC, in CTO interventions. Another important point, another important question we can uh, answer, we should answer with IRIS is, can we predict the significance of a known main lesion with IRIS? Okay, I understand that this slide is a little bit too crowded, but trust me, the short answer is no. We cannot predict the significance of a known left main lesion with IRIS. FFR is the standard, standard of care for functional assessment of lesion severity in, in intermediate stenosis. Uh, we should not use IRIS for that. The only type of lesion in which we can use IRIS for identification of significance is the left main. In the left main, uh, anatomy is quite well correlated with function, and moreover, we can use IRIS to gain valuable information that guide the PCI, uh, take the PCI if needed. So, as I said, the correlation between FFR values and MLA, meaning the smaller lumen area that, can, that we can uh, identify with IRIS, is quite good in left main, is very bad in no left main. So, easy answer, don't use IRIS for identification of a significant stenosis if you're not in the left main. Moreover, IRIS details in the left main are correlated with prognosis. So, if you identify a lesion which is uh, a minimum lumen area which is bigger than six millimeters square, you identify a population of patients uh, that are going to have a good, uh, a good uh, outcome without revascularization. So, again, let's simplify. Six millimeters square in the left main is okay, and three millimeters square minimal lumen area, residual area in each of the two branches of the left main is correlated with good prognosis. And what if you stand? Well, use IBUS. You should use IBUS to uh, guide uh, stenting of the left main because IBUS is, is associated with improved harder points. And again, you should aim for a very easy rule for very easy targets, obtaining five millimeters square in the third costume, six millimeters square in the LAD Austin, seven millimeters square in the polygon of confluence, eight millimeters square in the proximal left main. If you obtain this kind of value at post PCI evaluation, you are doing a good PCI in the main. Uh, and again, these optimal uh, results are associated with uh, op optimal Procedural results are associated with optimal long term prognosis. What about OCT? With OCT, you have higher resolution. You can more or less identify the intima, you can easily identify the media, and you can sometimes uh, lessen with IRIS, but uh, quite often see the external elastic membrane and the adamant tissue. You can clearly see the first. Uh, levels of atherosclerosis, so intima hyperplasia. You can identify some features which are uh, pointing to some type of plaques. So fibrophatic plaques or fibrotic plaques are associated with high backscatter, low attenuation slope, and homogeneous texture. Lipid-rich plaques are characterized by very fast attenuation of a plaque which has a bright top and uh, you don't see the edges. With calcium, you see the edges quite clearly. So you see sharp edges, signal intensity is low and signal does not attenuate fast as it does in the lipid plaques. Again, this is calcium. You can clearly see the sharp edges. You can identify and you can measure the cap thickness in plaques, but in general, 
in normal patients, you see all these features uh, look uh, all these features together. So you see uh, variable, uh, all the uh, typical features, you see them in a single patient. OCT is very important to study ACS patients because you can clearly see thrombus and you can differentiate between the three uh, main causes of coronary thrombosis of ACS, which is associated with thrombosis, so plaque rupture, plaque erosion, and calcified nodules. Thrombus is very, uh, is very clearly seen with OCT. It's, it's, it's a feature you should not miss. And you can also infer, between the, infer the composition of the thrombus because you can see why thrombus, which has low attenuation, as well as, and you can see high thrombus, which has high attenuation, and you, have, you don't see uh, beneath the thrombus. Uh, so you can clearly see a ruptured plaque in ACS. You can also infer uh, if a plaque is eroded uh, because you see thrombus, but you do not see ruptures, and the fibrous cap is intact. Uh, and there is some pro provisional data which, which point to rupture uh, yielding a worse prognosis than erosion. Also, a rarer causes of ACS, such as calcified nodules, can be identified. Uh, they are associated with ACS if you can also see thrombus. Also, sperm as a specific aspect of OCT. And you can also identify aspects which are typical of spontaneous coronary artery dissection or SCAD, because you can see an intramural hematoma and sometimes you can see flaps in the intim. Also, some features you should you are able to see after stenting, so intrastent thrombus, intrastent dissection, tissue prolapse, and uh, malaposition. Also, you can measure malaposition length in longitudinal and in actual slices, and this is quite important to obtain uh, optimal uh, center position. So, what do you do if you see? Uh, what do operators do when they see unfavorable OCT features? Sometimes, so the most, most often, they, uh, they, do some, they, they give some other valor inflations. Uh, in other cases, rarely, more rarely, they put another step. And if you obtain optimal OCT uh, results, you have a better prognosis which is associated with absence of irregular protrusion and larger minimal stent area. Again, Francesco Prati's results show us that if you obtain optimal CT results, you have optimal long-term uh, result in terms of prognosis. Uh, preliminary data also tell us that there is no large difference between uh, OCT guidance and IBUS guidance in terms of uh, uh, long term results of stents. Uh, this study, the Lumion 4 study, is ongoing and uh, will clarify, uh, because this is a very big study, whether angiography guided PCI or OCT guided PCI uh, with a uh, protocol which is based on uh, external elastic lamina measurement is uh, better. We, uh, are anxiously waiting for these results in order to clarify whether OCT guidance is needed in complex PCI. So, uh, let's put everything in context. I mainly think that in the left main, for significance, we should use FFR, but we can also use IBUS. I should also say that we may use OCT in the left main as well, but not in the osteal lesions because these lesions are not clearly seen with OCT. Same for the right, OCT is unfeasible in osteal disease. When you see haziness, so you see something, but you do not understand what you're seeing, well, use imaging, and OCT in this case is better than IOS, especially for carpet lesion identification. If you see intermediate diseases, you can 
you are sure that it is intermediate, but you want to look for significance, well, use a far, do not use imaging. For guidance of PCI, let me eyes as more data than OCT. Long standing or old style DMS, look, use imaging. I was as better data than OCT, but we are actually waiting for more data. And for other complex PCI types, you should use imaging, whatever you like. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you for inviting me in this fantastic uh, course. Thank you.